Hello and what is up everybody welcome back to game 2 between EG and Thunderbirds in the Kiev Major main stage This is the round of 16 loser gets eliminated of course and EG's already ahead one game They took game one pretty easily. I mean it wasn't the fastest win in the world, but um, That's just how they wanted to win the game of course off of Sumail storm spirit I think he ended the game with 31 bloodstone charges very good performance on him got to ganked and taken out twice in the laning stage but after that he did not have a single Ten death and here in the second game thunderbirds really seeing the trouble that the ricky gave them in the first game they even picked the bounty hunter to kind of act as a counter roamer Reserve. but uh the result of them banning out in the first phase is gonna give io away to eg eg gonna also get the treant protector and I think these are two very big heroes right now. Um, those are two heroes that can just take over the laning stage when played properly. And Thunderbird's going to have to be very cautious of how they played the early game here. Uh, as for EG, they ban out Coddle as well as Naga. Uh, they just don't want to get cancered out now that they ban Invoker and Slark as well. Uh, pretty funny bans, just to say the least. Uh, as Wee's Invoker, of course, Slark can give them a hard time. Uh, pretty low damage supports, and they don't have lockdown for Slark either. So um, this is uh, not uh, because they feel like they have a hard time maybe shutting down the Slark, but because um, he's always going to be that constant threat. And he, he if he does get free farm, even if he does have a bad lane, he maybe comes back throughout the jungle. Um... Just if, if they mess up at any point, um, Slark can give them a very hard time. And of course, it's one of Thunderbird's go to heroes for resolution. And I spoke about this Wisp as well as Triant, but as for Thunderbirds, they've got Beastmaster picked up, most likely for Moon Meander. And we saw them have success uh, with him, of course, at TI, and they beat EG with it at TI. Of course, it's a different player. It's now Moon Meander, not Mu on Beastmaster. And EG gonna follow up here with a Legion Commander pick, most likely for Universe, unless it is played by Arteezy. Hmm. Uh, as for Thunderbirds, they ban out the Bat Rider. I gotta mention that one because Bat Rider with Io, very strong combination, very hard to deal with. Bat Rider is also. Uh, uh, annoying hero uh, if they want to pick up certain melee heroes um, depending on the matchup uh, add an io or like a triant rotating in and that's potentially them losing their safe lane and losing it hard and i mean i think ichi definitely wanted to go for something like that as uh, with the bat rider ban they're going to pick the legion up instead here that can fulfill uh, a similar role uh, in terms of dominating the uh, safe lane And I wouldn't be surprised if Thunderbirds go with their second support here as EG has revealed both their supports. So yeah, they get Phoenix as a pickup. Uh, pretty solid pickup for them here. I think it is pretty good against the Chain Protector being able to burn through that living armor. Uh, pretty annoying for Io as well with the damage over time. It gives him a hard time as any damage over time hero uh, stops the bottling from Io, any healing. Uh, or from earn charge anything like that and definitely gonna make each think twice about playing a bit too over aggressive here and uh, this time eg will have the overall last pick as they got second pick in this game so i think they're gonna pick arteezy's hero here unless arteezy's hero is leading commander for whatever reason um, but i'm pretty sure it's universe's hero at this point Sp Vector maybe actually be pretty dope here. It's not banned out. A bit greedy, and it might mean that they need to put a support there to help her in the laning stage. But I think they have the support to do so, and it's gonna make them lack a bit of disable and have a pretty bad early game. And instead, they're gonna go for Troll Warlord. Um, and last time they ran this, it was against TNC, and they actually. Uh, had it mid. Well, I don't know if last time they ran troll, but last time I saw them ran troll was against TNC and they had it played mid. 
by Sumail. And I wonder if that's going to be the case again. And Thunderbirds just going to go for the Medusa pick fourth here. Uh, most likely as their mid hero. They have Phoenix Medusa. Uh, very annoying heroes to deal with. Uh, we saw that combination run by a Chinese team. Who it was VJ. Uh, Phoenix, Medusa, and Tree they had, I believe. Uh, it was some Chinese game. I don't think it was... I can't say who it was for sure. But... Um, Medusa, a pretty hard hero for EG to fight into at this point. Once again, I said their supports do lack some damage. And they have a good sustain all and gank potential with the relocate tree and protector with the nature's guys and the overgrowth, of course. But Medusa is going to be a hero that's going to be very hard for them to take down, even if Legion Commander comes in there with a duel. And Thunderbirds, yeah, knew that uh, this troll will be a most likely uh, carry hero as they ban out the Storm Spirit, while EG instead uh, ban out the Lina. And they're actually suspecting a carry Medusa, potentially, as uh, Lina would probably not be run safe lane for the most part. And what pick here would fit EG's draft pretty well? I think a sniper would be really strong for Smail. Reserve um, time. It plays outside the range of the Medusa, and we saw Secret use that to beat Medusa pretty hard. And oh, they were right about the carry Medusa here, as Puck will be the last pick for Thunderbirds. Beastmaster, Medusa, Puck. That's strong team fighting heroes, and I definitely think EG needs. Something for Samael that plays at a relatively long range. They, they, they don't want him to go in there. It's, it's a lot of things he has to deal with. The Phoenix Egg, Silence coming out from Puck. Um, time. Beastmaster Roar, of course. Uh, Stone Gaze. Um, but then with the Sniper, they kind of lack Disable and Lockdown for Puck. But I think overall, um, it's not a bad pickup. And oh, instead they're going to go for a Queen of Pain. And this might pay off. It's a very good matchup against Puck. Um, we're not good, but it's pretty much even. It's going to be down to skill. I think Sumail is very comfortable with this matchup, and he should be able to do very well with it. Um, the thing is, the Queen of Pain is kind of... And I'm going to say all-in pick, but against Medusa, they're definitely going to have to have a good game to... Uh, win otherwise medusa is going to get fat and if that happens uh, i don't see how eg can scale this until late especially with the supports they have um very low damage supports and eventually a low impact if medusa starts to get fat and puck gonna be able to create a lot of space for her throughout the uh, early to mid game and we'll see what happens here as we enter the game, game two between EG and Thunderbirds. Let's close all this stuff and get right into it. TP's coming out immediately, Soxa. Better get ready. We'll start with Boots, actually. And that means Phoenix will have to buy uh, the Warden Sentry here. Universe will be on the Legion Commander and Zai heading down here. He didn't go for the bottle rush build. Uh, starting with a fairy fire, it's going to allow him to uh, maybe get a bit of a surprise turnaround in these early game engagements. Uh, he's also going to pass off some tangos to Sumail. And now Crit going to pass him one as well, so he has three. Of course, uh, tangos onto Io are pretty much 1.5 times effective Ooh. HP heal onto the person he targets with the tether so it's a good start to start with the tango same thing can be said for the clarity and this allows him to pretty much be useful and not just sit around with a bottle and play very aggressively at level one and it's something that they are looking to do here it seems like as you're going to go for an aggro tribe potentially they try to shut down resolution that means uh, they're going to leave rtz 1v1 here on the top lane About against moon meander who actually went for the Quelling Blade build, so I think he knows of this. Because this is odd that he decides to go this build if he knew he was going to have to play against uh, an Io or a Treant. And speaking of Treant, he goes down here trying to go up towards this bottom rune. And 
Hopkins. That's just a nice lift coming out from Soxa with the boots, and he's going to go down there. going to get a D ward here as well, uh, preventing their camp from being blocked up. And uh, Crit going to just move to the top lane now. And this going to be shameful death to uh, Thunderbirds giving away first blood, but uh, at the end of the day, not the biggest deal. Who actually got the first blood there is Misery, I think. Yep. So open the last hits right here, and I'm expecting Sumail to do better in the mid lane just because he's Sumail, and the matchup is not favored for Queen of Pain, but not a bad one. And I think it's something that he's played a lot and he's quite comfortable with, and uh, it's going to depend actually, but keep in mind he does have the Treant Armor advantage. Uh, his eye is going to level Treant Armor early, otherwise he's going to just have Nature's Guys. Most, like, most likely he's built, so there's no Treant Armor coming out, at least uh, for the first five minutes or so. Uh, so it will be in a bit of an aggressive dual lane coming out from Universe, as in the top lane. Uh, Crit comes in with the Leech Seed and get a kill there. Uh, with the help of Arteezy and his Whirling Axes, that's a double slow action. Uh, doing work here, getting that kill onto Moon Neander. As for Sumail, let's look at his lane here. He's doing very good against Wii, so I was right to expect that. Nice deny there as well into the range creep. And Wii only has two CS so far in the bottom lane. Soxa as well as Misery going to go for some pull action. Zion Universe coming in to contest it. They should intercept this bull pretty easily, and it's not even an interception. Misery is uh, getting that experience. Zai coming in onto the bounty rune, actually leveling up the spirits level two. And this is not something too common, but with the uh, with no bottle quite yet, he doesn't really need the overcharge. And now he's gonna run into Soxa with the haste. He has to be a bit careful here. He gets the tether onto Misery. And Misery was able to throw some fire spirits on them, but they're able to back away, use the shrine, and get out just fine. And with that death on the top lane, Moon Meander will be forced to jungle right now. He still has regen, so he's going to tank up and do just fine here. He's going to finish up his Iron Talon as well. If you look at Wii, he's forced to shrine, and he's not doing good in this lane at all. Sumail, I mean, almost tripling his CS at this point. Actually tripling his CS. And Arezzo, pretty much free farming bottom. This aggro dual lane not uh, doing the best at contesting him in farm. Uh, but that is because Thunderbird's committing both supports down here. And that's going to give Sumail the 1v1 matchup that ideally that EG wanted him to have. And you can see why is he's pretty far ahead in terms of Wii right now. And this is significant as with this big of an advantage, uh, Queen of Pain can take out Quap as long as uh, Sumail plays it right. Uh, every time Quap uses phase shift, uh, there's going to be kill potential onto him uh, with IO rotating in and even uh, once the Sonic Wave comes online, of course. Sumail going to eat an orb of illusion to the face. And oh, Universe tempted kill onto him here, but he's just going to drop is overwhelming odds and instead they're gonna switch their attention onto Zai and throw a mystic snake to his face but with living armor gonna keep him alive and they're doing just fine down in this bottom lane bottle recharges gonna bring universe back to full HP but uh, Zai will have to go refill his bottle with uh, picking up a rune here and he's not gonna be able to pick up the real rune if it's here and it does spawn bottom and Soxa should grab this up Sumail not quite completing his bottle yet because he did go for a double no talisman to continue to dominate this lane. Uh, Weeha has gone his own double no talisman but if you look at the CS score, Sumail is still doubling up the puck. Top lane Arteezy is free farm as Moonmander has just transitioned into jungling to make sure he gets his levels and farm up. I don't think he can lane in the top lane anymore as of that death. Uh, oh and Crit actually didn't go for the Nature's Guys build and this is what I was going to mention before. Living Armor is very good in this matchup uh, to help both help out Sumail. Using it on Zai is critical as well. Um, if Thunderbirds ever goes onto Zai, he can receive that living armor. He's going to heal up the target that he's tethered to there as well. And they're getting a lot of value out of it. So, And they're also seeing that uh, at this point, Meander is just jungling and he's not going to get anything on Nature's Guys at this point. So I do like this build coming out from Crit. It is a bit situational. 
because of how the game is going, but um, it's definitely uh, the correct build in this situation for sure. Uh, Universe once again going to be in trouble. Now Zai going to come in with the tether. He doesn't have bottle charges. He has two magic stick charges, which is, isn't really significant at all. But of course he can receive the living armor uh, if he calls for it. And it's going to help Universe get out. Universe, keep in mind, does have 10 stick charges. So Thunderbirds has to watch out for that. He's just going to use it now, actually. And he will bring resolution down very low along with Misery with that overwhelming odds. And uh, you can see this is why they picked the Legion Commander. Uh, from an offlane position with a little bit of help uh, as he received there from the IO. He's going to be able to dominate uh, this lane. He's going to pop resolution in the face with another overwhelming odds here. And this is very annoying uh, for a hero like Medusa to deal with. Now he's entirely out of mana as well as HP and he will have to fairy regen to himself. You look at the mid lane. Uh, Weeha has done a bit of catching up and that's mostly because he uh, has leveled up his illusory orb illusory orb I mean and uh, that will allow him to uh, get some CS using it but uh, in terms of farm Sumail is doing just fine uh, X, uh, Zai gonna TP in and uh, regen universe up here with uh, clarity he has refilled his bottle Sumail um, what happened oops yeah, Soxa jacked a DD rune. I was wondering what happened to the 6 minute rune there. Uh, now Nature's guy is going to be leveled by crit. He's scouting Moonman out. He's ready to uh, go on him once he sees him walk back into the lane. And immediately RTZ goes on to him. He doesn't get the bash off of the Nature's guys, Which means that Moonmander is going to get away. I think he was going to get away regardless. Because with boots as well as wind lace. He's kind of hard to lock down. Even with double slows coming out from EG. And RTZ did go for the max... A whirling axis build, uh, not the bash build, onto the troll, which means he's going to have more burst damage, uh, as well as, uh, I mean, that's, that's about it. Uh, the blind duration also is increased. And Samael blinking onto Weeha, he wants to try to uh, play very aggressively here, uh, balling up now, forcing the salve out of Puck. <laughs> Gets to deny there under tower. And we see Universe wanting a kill here onto Misery. They even committed the troll ultimate. And with the overwhelming odds, they will be able to secure that kill. Uh, bottom lane going very good for EG at this point. Weeha coming in, wanting to get the Dream Coil to catch out Zai. But he didn't get there quite in time. And Sumail checking the top rune. He's going to spawn bottom instead. Grabbed up by Zai. He's going to find himself. Nice illusion rune is gonna just bottle up now, pick up this bounty here as well. Most likely, I think Sumail gonna go back to base to refill his bottle. Top lane of TZ is still free farming, 61 CS on him. Uh, definitely pulling ahead of Rezo as he's had a pretty rough lane, and even Rezo gonna acknowledge that as he's going back into Midas to make sure he can scale. He's really the only carry on the side of Thunderbirds, and. Um, that's EG's way to outscale. Is if they can give Rezo a hard time, and uh, especially if he's just not at the top of the net worth, it doesn't even matter if he's doing decent. If he's not at the top, um, they're going to outscale him with their three core lineup. Uh, if you look at Thunderbirds, Weeha's already doing pretty poorly, and Moonmander, I mean, he's doing okay, but Beastmaster is simply not a hero that scales that hard. Um, of course, he's a very annoying split pusher, but EG do have the answers to split push this game with IO. Um, Legion Commander, as well as the Puck, uh, uh, not Puck, the Queen of Pain being pretty good at catching out split pushers with her blink. And now they're going to rotate RTZ down into the bottom lane to try to pressure Rezo's tower. Rezo most likely will TP away. I don't think he's going to fight this. He doesn't even have these stone gates yeah, leveled up. Tower. He's only level 6, no. but uh, they are going to fight this, it seems, as Misery going to TP in. I don't know about this. They're going to go in. Duel going to be used onto Misery. This is an easy duel win. And now Reza will be spotted. Ortiz is actually going to back away. He realizes that Puck is coming in and he sees the TP. And they don't want to dive too deep. And Dream Core will be missed by Wii. And so EG get out and they see the Dream Core is missed. And they're running back in. They're probably just going to go back, take this tower. And the thing is, they don't know whether Rezo has Stone Gaze or not, so they didn't want to commit there. But I think they would have if they knew that uh, there was no Stone Gaze. Because even if they did get Dream Curled up, they could 
tank pretty well. They have the living armor to keep them alive, and without the phoenix there, there was nothing really to take it off quickly. Crit's uh, job here is to just keep this top tower alive from Moonmander. The rest of this team are going to shrine up in the bottom lane, and they're not going to commit into this bottom tower. Uh, they're still not quite sure about the uh, ultimate or... Uh, Situation coming out from resolution. I don't want to fight into a stone gaze at this point. It's not going to be a good idea. Um, and of course, Sumail wants to finish up his veil as well. He's going to be able to do that in the mid lane. Misery. Uh, going to rotate to the top lane right now. Crit's the only one here. He's got a fair decent amount of experience. He's going to get dusted up. Misery flying in towards him. The Roar going to be coming in now as well as the Sunray. But he's just going to be able to turn around. He's level 6 so he has the Overgrowth going to be used. Locking down Misery as well as Moonmere. That's an easy duel win for them there. And Crit jabating them. It's a level 6 Train Protector. And they're going to relocate straight back to the bottom lane. Uh, Sumail will have his completed Veil. He has a nice... Regen rune for himself there as well, and Moonmander is completely out of mana. And I mean, they found it hard there to kill a uh, level 6 tree at, and he's quite tanky. And that's because Misery is pretty low level, had a lot of points in Fire Spirits, but he definitely saw that his Sunray wasn't doing that much, and he immediately tried to cancel it, but at that point, there was no escape, especially with the relocate coming in. as he's already committed his uh, Icarus dive there. Smell continuing to farm up. RT's at the top of the net worth and EG looking happy on all their cores right now. They've taken the top Radiant three Star networks in the game while uh, Thunderbirds are the next top three. Uh, Resolution will be the most farmed hero on his team right now and uh, maybe not anymore as Arteezy and Zai come in with a nice gank, and that's just them finding him in the jungle casually. And now they're going to rotate in, maybe looking for Weeha as well. If Arteezy can get a lucky first hit, bash, and Sumail just going to follow onto the high ground. And that's two cores dead for Thunderbirds. Another tower gone. Well, not another tower, this is the first tower of the game. Forgot they didn't actually take this bottom tower, but they might as Universe is pushing in. Someone from the side of Thunderbirds will have to TP in for this one. Uh, on the bright side, Moonmander did get a kill onto this top lane. Not on a hero, but on a tower. But with the relocate coming in, instead he's going to be the one killed. Uh, free kill there for RTZ, who built into the Vlads. It's going to be nice for the armor. Zai actually going to bring him back, and they're going to head straight down in this bottom lane. We, as well as Misery, has to watch out. RTZ is here. They go on to Universe, but it doesn't matter. They just get the turnaround kill. That's a dead bird, and that's going to be a dead fairy dragon in a second. Duel coming out. That's the third duel win of the game for Universe, and EG entirely taking over the game right now. Score is 9-1, to one, and Thunderbirds looking at... A 6,000 gold advantage, oh, even more than that, 7,500 gold advantage, approaching 10k for EG at this point, and this is only 13 minutes in the game playing against an IO, and I actually don't see Thunderbirds wait to come back into this uh, unless EG severely mess up somewhere. Um, there's a level 8 IO uh, onto Zai. And Ortiz just putting pressure onto this bottom tier too. And I mean, Thunderbirds can't play aggressive at this point. Roar happens, Zai gonna relocate out. Um, I mean, maybe they roar and they relocate someone else in the counter initiate. And Universe is gonna instead go in with the duel onto Misery. And that's what is his fifth death of the game right now. And I think three of those were duel wins for Universe. Thunderbirds is falling apart. Crit scouting out in this top lane. He is going for Midas. He found Soxa and the relocate going to come in now. Universe is here as well. And that's a dead Rubik. Thunderbirds getting picked off all over the map. Weeha does see the relocate coming in from the mid lane. But I mean he can't fight here. Resolution a useless hero for the next I would say 20 minutes or so. 
and that's 20 minutes where EG can do pretty much anything they want. And I do like this Queen of Pain pick right now. They didn't uh, think too much about trying to counter this Medusa. Instead, uh, they actually knew that Reza would be playing the carry uh, Medusa. So instead, they picked a nice mid matchup for Samael as they had the last pick. And as the puck came out for Thunderbird, they followed up with the Queen of Pain. Samael is like, give me that hero. I feel confident. Uh, I'm going to stomp we and, and that's exactly what happened. RTZ will take this bottom tier 2 tower. Rezo forced back to Shrine and Crit just chilling. Like, he's having the most chill game in the world right now. He's just been sitting in this top lane and EG's telling him, this is your job, bro. You're going to stop Moonmander from ratting uh, this top lane and you're also going to set up ganks for us right now as he finds the bash, the uh, slow onto Moonmander overgrade is going to be used as well. But nice roar onto Arteezy and he doesn't have his IO here. And with the... Uh, Supernova coming in as well. It's going to be a death onto Arteezy. This is Zai not being there. He didn't have his TP available. He's going to run slowly. Now Duel going to be committed. And they will find the kill there onto Moonmander. Zai going to heal up Universe now. And they're going to play very aggressively. They didn't kill everyone here pretty much. So even though Arteezy as well as Crit end up going down. Their misery barely gets out. I mean Sumail could have killed them there. I think he'd be used to screen. But he just uh, didn't pop it in time. So Thunderbirds narrowly avoids three deaths there. Instead, they'll lose two. So it's going to be an even trade. Of course, they're so far behind. Any even trade will favor them at this point. And they only won out there because Zai didn't have his relocate up quite yet, I believe. And his TP was on cooldown. If Zai was there, that was an easily turned fight. And probably no heroes dying for EG. And all of the heroes dead for Thunderbirds that were involved there. And that will also buy resolution time to farm up. Um, and look at the deep wards coming out from EG at this point. So they know exactly what's going on. And they're still feeling confident after that trade. Uh, they just can't afford many more of those. Um, but if it's a trade like that, uh, it's not going to pull them too far behind. It's when they take a full team fight and lose or trade severely that's going to hurt them. And if you look at TZ, he's already pretty much finished up his Sanjin Joshua and he's at the top of the network. So that death not even going to put him behind at all. He's still significantly ahead of Rezo in terms of farm. Um, and you look at Sumail and you can say that same thing with him uh, compared to Weeha. As Weeha has about almost half Sumail's net worth right now. And he doesn't have his blink. He doesn't have any item at this point. This is a poor looking puck, not even going for that veil. And if he does go for the veil, he's not going to have it actually. So that's quite saddening for Wii at this point. He's never quite recovered from that bad laning stage in that 1v1 matchup against Samael. And now Samael is going to have a Lincoln Sphere soon. And that's incredible. RTZ. With his Sanja Yasha complete now, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes for a pretty aggressive build, going for a blink next or something like that. Um, they definitely can afford a build like that at this point. The bite is going to be complete onto crit. He actually got his living armor still in there, which might be significant. His level 4 living armor. Uh, they try for a kill there onto Wee, but he does have haste stream that will get him away. And game slowing down a bit here for EG, and this will favor Thunderbirds. Look at the overall net worth, and EG still at a 10,000 advantage, but it's uh, stabilized a bit now, and the bleeding has stopped. All right, nice over one odds. They're gonna kill there onto a bird, and it looks like EG want to get something done as they know they're really strong right now. They're grouping up, want to take this tier one top. Thunderbirds trying to defend for sure. Keep in mind they do have the living armor level four. And all of Ichi probably going to back off maybe. They do see that Thunderbirds have committed uh, heroes for this. Uh, and instead, yeah, Sumail just TP's bottom and he will finish his Lincoln Sphere as well. And they're not going to commit too hard to try to take out this tier 1. It, first of all, it's not the most important thing in the world to take out this tower. Uh, they've taken out the by far more important tier 1 towers mid as well as bottom. And maybe committing too much. This will give Thunderbirds a potential team fight and a way to come back in the game. Instead, 
EG going to continue to play to split the map. They're getting more farm on all their cores at this point. Resolution is trying his best to come back, and it's, this is a beginning as he's almost caught up to Universe. Almost is the key word there. And now, since Thunderbirds did have to rotate all their heroes to potentially defend this Tier 1, they've grouped up now and want to push top tower, but they know that they probably can't. And they're going to back off right now. Uh, Sumail and Zai has pushed this bottom lane all the way in, and they really want to kill Misery there. And Sumail will blink onto him. Living Armor will help tank up a bit of that damage there. And look at that slow attack speed, so slow. Uh, universe building into a shadow blade and he's gonna have it pretty soon and everyone on eg is farming very well oh rtz here actually going for a diffusal blade that's gonna be pretty good against the medusa and overall not bad build actually uh, the extra slow is pretty useful as well as they don't have the best disables on their team um, let's get on to catch up and start chain bashing as well and universe Gonna have his Shadow Blade, and once he has that, he can set up Yanks. I like how Zai has made the decision to stay with Sumail. Um, he's the most mobile hero, and if you can relocate it, he doesn't have to relocate directly onto the enemy hero that's uh, getting initiated on by Legion Commander. So they have a chance to either fall back or abort if necessary. Uh, as to if he was following RTZ, uh, he would have to relocate more or less directly on the hero, and if they get caught in a bad Dream Coil or Roar, Supernova or something like that, I can see Zai dying, if Zai dies, Arteez is going to die as well. Whereas Sumail, uh, let's say Zai dies somehow, he should be able to get himself away, especially with the Lincoln Sphere. Um, there's no way that Thunderbirds can lock him down reliably at this point. Crit, kind of building into a Blink Dagger after his Midas, about less than halfway there. Ortiz is still farming very well. We'll have a completed defusal flying out to him now. And finally, Resolution will eke ahead of Universe. But speaking about Universe, he's going to force the Stone Gaze coming out from Resolution. He was very afraid there as a Relocate could have come in. He didn't see where TC was at that point as well, I believe. And uh, actually, you probably saw him bottom. He just wasn't... Uh, wasn't sure, but instead they're gonna duel there onto Soxa, and look at the damage coming out from Universe. Moon Manor now in trouble. Sumail gonna commit the Sonic Wave, and that's an easy kill for EG. And Rezo, sure he has come back in the game, but the rest of the heroes on the side of Thunderbirds are hurting. Just look at Wee's farm right now. He's still not made a recovery since that bad early game against Sumail, and I'm starting to second guess the last pick. Oh my, Puck! I mean, that, that was a play there because if he got that Aegis, even if he just died straight afterwards and uh, didn't even get out with it, I would say it's worth it uh, denying it from EG because they're that far ahead at this point. Universe, casual kill there onto Soxa. And the ward placement from EG uh, is pretty impressive right now. They got very good coverage. They know exactly where Thunderbirds are moving. And Arteezy, eight charges on his defusal blade. He wants to battle. And I say he gets a BKB and he's absolutely untouchable. And they could actually just end the game off of it. Score is 18 and 3. About to be a 20,000 gold advantage for EG. And I bet Thunderbirds are regretting giving Io away. At this point, they've gotten so many relocate ganks off, and this IO is making their game impossible. The only hero they can even get farm on right now is Resolution, but that's not going to be enough to carry the game. If you put Arteezy next to Rezo right now and he doesn't have the stone gaze up, Rezo will die in a matter of seconds. Actually, any hero on the side of Thunderbirds will die in a matter of seconds. And that's just Arteezy alone. And you add the extra attack speed coming out from the IO. And um, of course the Sonic Wave coming out. Universe is hitting very hard at this point as well. It's 78 dual damage on him. You can clearly tell Universe is having a very good game. He has his Shadow Blade now. He's building into AC as his next item. And he's level 18. And I didn't talk much about the net worth advantage for Eiji. But they also are in about 20,000 net worth advantage 
RTD not even going to bother with the blade mill. Instead, he's going to go with a clap gap closing item, and it's not going to be a blink. It's going to be a completed shadow blade. That's the luxury that uh, EG can uh, do right now. Crit going to find socks, and he's going to die in one hit. All right, bye bye, Rubik. We immediately going to get himself out there, and Rezo continuing to farm, and he's the only farmed hero on the side of Thunderbirds, and he's their only hope right now. And we getting himself out, hiding in the trees here. Resolution continuing to farm up. They buy a gem on the side of Thunderbirds. They realize they need to get the map control. And so that gem will spot out Artesia and his Shadow Blade. And the roar gonna come out. All his mana has been burned. Keep in mind he still does have the Aegis, but alright, Artesia, what are you doing here? He's gonna go down and he's right next to the enemy shrine as well as the high ground, of course. He's gonna try to get himself away. Duel gonna be using the backline onto Moonmander. Uh uh interesting. So Zai actually relocated in, but he didn't tether because his keyboard broke. So Sumail is not here. He has a TP though, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, and so let's look at this fight here. Moonmander is already dead. They've already used Roar. They've also used the Stone Gaze. Zai gonna reconnect now. Um, what do they have left? They have no ultimates left, and EG have everything. I think Arteezy just turns around. Zai tethers to him. Um, he's still a bit far uh, far away, but I mean he can get there in time. And Sumail TPs to the shrine and everybody dies. Uh, oh, they still do have the supernova. But Troll can just ult and everybody clicks that and is dead in a matter of seconds. In less than that. They'll literally die in a second, I think. So very awkward pause here. This is a... Uh... <laughs> Both teams right now are feeling a bit... Um, uh, at, at odds, EG, they wanted to relocate Samael in here, he's not in, and then I think Thunderbirds realized that, uh, do they actually see him here? Yeah, they do uh, with this boar, I believe, they have a ward in this area as well as a hawk here. That's not going to spot outside, but I'm, I'm sure they, they saw the relocate and they know that he's in the area, and the thing is, do Thunderbirds commit? Because there is no escape for them, really. I think their best play here is actually just to run away and go onto this, sh just hop this shrine, hop onto the shrine, and maybe uh, EG overcommit onto them, and then they can take a fight there. Because if they fight here, EG is for sure at an advantage. Like crit, the thing is, can they even get away? Crit has a blink dagger. You can just blink in and overgrowth. Zai can TP onto Arteezy. Um, Sumail, of course, probably will TP onto mid tower or the shrine here and just get a nice sonic wave onto like three or four heroes. Zai gonna reconnect now, and I actually think Thunderbirds is screwed. Like, the Living Armor is gonna come out onto Arteezy. Um, and it doesn't matter what Thunderbirds do, actually. I'm sure they're just dead. Oh, very nice silence from Weeha. And I think the pause had something to do with that, and he was prepared. But now, Sumail, of course, I did say he was going to TP in, and he will TP in, and they're going to clean up. So it didn't matter at the end of the day. And we going to have to jaunt himself out. He actually has just bait them a bit there. So he actually didn't jaunt. Instead, he walked top. But Sumail still going to catch him out. He has the Orchid, and right, we is dead. Full five-man wipe for EG there. That's, that's some type of a bait for Arteezy. And Zai will just bring Arteezy back to the top lane. He'll take Rax. And I would say this is pretty much a game. Uh, honestly, I don't see what Thunderbirds can do. And they're just forced into their base by Arteezy. And he's going to hit level 20. And they're going to walk straight into mid. And Thunderbirds can't fight this. They don't have Supernova. They don't have anything. Like I'm, The game is over, actually. They're not calling it quite yet. I'm probably going to go for a last stand. But at this point, EG is just too far ahead. Approaching 30,000 now after that fight. And oh, that's two set of racks down, and they're gonna go bottom and just get the third, or not? 
I back away a bit. Size is a bit low. He has a full mech in base. And they know that this game is pretty much in the bag. And there's no reason to just go full Devi and try to uh, get that bottom set. So they can go back to it at any time. They're in no rush. And Sumail, we're going to TP out to the bottom lane. Universe has a completed Assault Curious. They've stolen the gem from Moon Meander. Ortiz is just going to build into a Silver Edge. As his next item pickup, Zai even has a completed uh, Garden Greaves if he wants. Uh, and a couple gold. And I mean, Rezo. And what is, he, what is he doing? You saw how fast he died in that last fight. Uh, that's a Medusa. He used his Stone Gaze. EG runs away, and as soon as it ends, they turn around and they melt him like butter. Universe up to 96 dual damage now, and he's hitting very hard himself. And keep in mind, they have the troll ultimate buffing up everybody attack speed, and Samael is hitting pretty hard himself here as well. He did go for the, uh, no, he went for the strength instead of the plus 25 damage. Eh. I'm pretty standard. Normally, Queen of Pain goes for the strength anyway. And it does help him tank up. And he even is staying on strength treads. And now EG just walking straight into this bottom lane. They just want to close it out. This is the last hurrah for Thunderbirds. Rezo gonna try to defend to the best of his ability. And... High ground defense for Thunderbirds is still not to be underestimated. I think EG realized this. They're like, we could probably go high ground here, but I mean, let's just choke them out. Wait for them to leave the base and get a pick off. If any hero on the side of Thunderbird leaves the base, they could immediately just get wiped off the map. And uh, EG gonna wait for the next push most likely. There's a nice haste rune for them here. And oh, Thunderbirds actually feeling a desperation coming out with a five man smoke. Uh, they know that if they give Roshan a way to EG, the game is pretty much done for them. And instead, EG is going to smoke themselves. And I think Sumail spotted out there, was unless he wasn't caught in the smoke. Uh, some of the heroes on the side of Thunderbirds did get their smoke pop. And EG definitely know where they are. Sumail blinking in. They get the duel there onto Resolution. He's not going to be able to get his ultimate off, I believe. Yep, he goes down. He does have buyback, but... I mean, I think it's too late. Phoenix gets her egg popped. Moonmander just tries to TP out. He gets out, but GG is called Godlike Streak for Sumail. And EG going to take game two against Thunderbird. That's going to be a nice 2-0 for them. And they're going to continue at the key major. Thunderbirds will be eliminated in the first round by a fellow NA team or former fellow NA team. I'm not too sure anymore. But that looked like, I would say... A pretty easy series for EG. First game, Sumail just went off on his Storm Spirit. Second game, it was absolute domination. The score was 27 to 3. Uh, Thunderbirds pretty much lost every single lane except for Rezo's lane, but even at that point, I mean, sure, he was getting decent farm, but I mean, what are you going to do at that point when all your other lanes has lost so hard? And pretty much EG was able to do pretty much anything they wanted. They were just roaming the map, getting multiple relocate kills before Thunderbirds really learned. And at that point, it was too late. EG got a 10,000 gold advantage relatively early, and fighting into them was impossible. And I did call it in the drafting stage. They had the lane dominators. They played with them well, and Thunderbirds didn't look like they had a chance. And most of it was we having a very rough time against Sumail in just that 1v1 matchup. And without the puck being able to get off his uh, early ganks or anything like that, it pretty much uh, meant that Thunderbirds didn't have a chance in this one, uh, especially once uh, Arteezy came online as well as Universe. 10-0 and on Universe, 9-0 and on Sumail. Everyone on EG pretty much was dominating this game while Thunderbirds just absolutely fell apart. And I don't know, maybe they're going to have a change in roster after this change in organization. And we'll see. But I'm excited to see more of EG at Keith Major and see you guys in the next one. Nice catching this EG game. And it's nice to see them back in a strong looking form here. 
So uh, see you guys later and peace out.